Hi, so I'm Matt Capsey, I'm Senior Lecturer in Paramedic Science and I teach on the Paramedic Practice BSc. Paramedics first arose in the ambulance service but they work across a wide range of placements now and placement settings. The, the fundamental thing that paramedics do is meet patients with what we call undifferentiated healthcare needs, so the patient knows that something is wrong, perhaps they're feeling breathless, they have some pain somewhere, but they don't know what the reason is. It might be something very serious, it might be something that's quite benign, and part of our role is to recognise the things that are seriously wrong and intervene, and for patients where something is less serious, then signposting them to other care and helping them to cope with the situation that they find themselves in. So it covers quite a range of clinical presentations, but the main thing we do is meeting patients, understanding what their needs are, and then trying to help them to meet those. Paramedics work in a range of settings now. The traditional um, ambulance service placement, so working out of double crewed ambulances, also solo response in response cars. Within the Ambulance Service Trusts, there are roles within the Hazardous Area Response Team and some of the other specialist roles. We also have paramedics working on helicopters within the Helicopter Emergency Medical Services. We have paramedics working in primary care, so an increasing number of GP practices are now employing paramedics to deal with patients that are coming in. We have paramedics working in accident and emergency, urgent care centres, walk-in centres, and there are also roles that we have graduates in who are working overseas, working in industry. There are people working offshore in the oil industry and, and moving overseas to work in settings in the Middle East and Australia, New Zealand. So quite a range of places for paramedics to go to once they've qualified. There's a range of content within the course. Most people would understand that there'll be elements of anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, so how diseases progress. There are clinical skills, such as gaining vascular access, intraosseous access, airway management, drug administration, but also as a registered profession, we're named in law for certain drugs that we can give. So students need to understand our legal position they need to understand ethical decision making. They also need to be able to lead because paramedics may be taking the clinical lead even as a, as a frontline paramedic. You'll be leading junior colleagues and coordinating with police, fire, GPs, community services. So there's quite a wide range of knowledge and skills that are involved in the course beyond the obvious of anatomy, physiology and clinical skills. We use a variety of placements for students to ensure that they get the exposure that we need them to. We use fundamental care placements so that students that have no healthcare background get used to meeting patients and, and establishing a rapport, helping patients dress and mobilise. So that, that could be in a care home or a nursing home, it could be on a care of the elderly ward. We need students to practice their skills in history taking and assessing patients. So those sort of placements might be a medical assessment unit, it might be in a walk-in centre. Some of the critical care skills will be developed in intensive treatment units, in high dependency units, within an A&E setting or theatres. And we also place our students out with the ambulance service to take some of those skills and see how they can be applied out in the community for patients in poorly controlled situations. As we move on through the course, we also have some placements that students can access in prisons, with mental health teams, with district nursing teams and community um, response teams outside of that traditional ambulance service idea that, that many of our applicants have for the paramedic. It's important that our students have their learning from subject specialists, so child and family placements where they'll spend a week working with people whose job day in and day out is dealing with children and young people to really develop those skills. We have very little control over what students will see if they were on an ambulance placement and so it's very important to use those placement areas to develop the more detailed skills that they will need to be able to apply in their future profession. The amount of time spent in placement varies across the years, but roughly speaking, it's about 16 weeks a year is spent out in placement at the moment. Coupled with that are some simulation weeks 
where experiences that it's not possible to ensure that students are exposed to in, in placement learning will actually see as an example of that, obstetric emergencies, so emergencies associated with childbirth. We can't guarantee that a student will see that, and if a mother is in distress during childbirth, it's not appropriate for the student to take the lead on that. So skills like that will be developed in simulated practice led by our midwifery colleagues. We've got a wide range of facilities here at Teesside. We have the simulation suites, so we are able to simulate hospital ward settings. We have a range of mannequins from quite low fidelity resuscitation mannequins up to high fidelity mannequins that have pulses, will breathe, um, will generate heart and breathing sounds in them when they're being assessed. One of the really nice facilities that we have at the moment is the crime scene house that was developed for our crime scene colleagues. That allows us to set up scenarios in quite narrow domestic settings, so narrow staircases, narrow corridors, bedrooms, bathrooms, um, industrial type settings, and we can also completely black out rooms in there for students to practice managing scenarios at night where the only sources of light you have are what you carry in with you. We also have a simulated ambulance which, to be honest, is not actually a simulated ambulance, it's a real ambulance body that was relocated up onto the second floor so that students can understand the space constraints of working in the back of an ambulance where once a patient's loaded, you only have access to one side of their body, you only have the equipment that you've brought into that small space. So quite a range of uh, simulated facilities there. And then alongside that, the teaching facilities, lecture theatres, teaching rooms, and all the other facilities that are available through the library service. We like to use a range of assessments on the paramedic practice course. There are traditional assignments. In the first year, there are time-limited exams. We also use practical assessments where students come in and demonstrate their skills. We use oral assessments, so students will come in and have a conversation around case studies and be assessed in that way. We have practice competencies. Every year students have to be signed off by a practice mentor as being competent to progress on to the next year. We try to have a range of uh, assessments so that different students who, who can shine in different areas each get an opportunity to give their best performance. There's a number of things that Teesside has which are less common in other universities. We feel that one of our key strengths is that we work with a number of ambulance service trusts. So we work with Yorkshire and North East Ambulance Service Trusts. Students then get an awareness of the differences between different potential employers and that helps prepare them for applying for jobs anywhere in the country that they may want to after they graduate. We have quite a long track record of providing paramedic education here at Teesside. I myself have been here for over 14 years and we've been delivering our pre-registration BSc for over eight years now and the course has gradually developed over that time and we've learnt as we go along of how to deliver a really good course. We have quite a, a wide paramedic team here as well, so amongst the team we have people with a broad range of clinical experience from frontline NHS ambulance practice to private practice. We have colleagues that have worked in GP practices, we have colleagues that have worked on the air ambulance. So as a course team, we bring together quite a wide variety of experience to help inform the teaching that we give to students. When we're doing our interviews and looking at potential applicants, rather than looking for particular healthcare experience, we're looking for the sort of knowledge and skills that are more difficult to teach if people don't have them. So an interest in people, um, an interest in providing care and helping, but also an understanding of the paramedic profession itself and having that broader understanding and that deeper understanding than the average member of the public would. The average member of the public will think of paramedics working on ambulances, driving to car accidents, heart attacks and saving lives. With applicants, we're looking for people having that deeper understanding of the broad role, the impacts of mental health, the, the personal challenges that can be associated with being a paramedic, but fundamentally that interest in people and that desire to care is what we're looking for in potential applicants. Clinical skills, anatomical knowledge, 
are the sort of things that we'll be teaching on the course. If you'd like to find out more about the course at Teesside University, then we'd love to see you at an open day.